All right, welcome back. What I'm about to show you is uh, not a little hill. This, this incline area is actually a burst lava bubble that came from this uh, volcano, this mountain up here. This mountain is, uh, you know, well over 12,000 feet tall. And uh, many years ago, uh, it, when it erupted, uh, like nearby Mount St. Helens, which you may have heard of. Um, this uh, lava bubble burst, and uh, there's a crater in here, so I'm going to show you it. All right, I'm just climbing my way up into this crater, and uh, here I'm noticing that uh, I'm going to have to come visit this plant back in the summertime because this bears fruit. Uh, I don't know. If it's a gooseberry, a currant, or a jostaberry, berry, or it's some sort of berry, and it, bear, and it bears a pretty tasty fruit. All right, let's go. I'm majorly out of shape. All right, let's see if we can get a look in here. Lots of lava rock, lots of gray diggers, or I don't know, something that looks like a marmot, if you know what a marmot is. All right. Eat a machete. Whoa. <laughs> Tripped there for a second. All right. Here we go. Here it is, a crater. Not very many people know about this because I don't think there's very many craters like this. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't know if you can tell the depth, but yeah. Lots of animals live in there. It's the middle of April and you know the weather is getting warm when you see these uh, dandelions in the pasture. And uh, yeah, the cows don't mind them though. All right, farm friends, I've got a little project here to show you. As you know, uh, I make my living in dairy, but I also have a lot of other projects that I'm trying to undertake right now. You know when you go to the grocery store and there's the same fruit over and over again? Well, what I'm trying to do here is plant uh, currants, gooseberries, jasta berries, and some blueberries. I have uh, four rows of uh, about 50 each. So I just got tired of eating the same fruit year after year. So I'm doing a little project to see if they're adapted to the lower soils here. And, uh, that way I didn't plant them too late in the spring. And I still got some work left to do. I'm gonna put, uh, you know, shavings around each hole and hopefully that'll choke out the weeds a bit. I could go the plastic, plastic culture way, but I don't know, I'm all, I'm all new to this growing fruit stuff. So if anyone knows anything about growing rare fruit, tell me. It looks like the wind snapped one of my gooseberry limbs, branches, right off. And uh, I guess I don't know enough about plants to know if this would sprout a, <laughs> um, you know, roots or anything. I know that it sort of looks like a primocane, but I mean, I don't really know what I'm talking about, to be honest. But yeah, these uh, gooseberries uh, have more. A lot of the other ones, like uh, some of the blueberries and, and currants, I mean, jostaberries don't have thorns, but I planted the ones with the thorns. Um, you know, I hope that, that maybe it's a little bit of a deterrent uh, to the deer, but I don't really know for sure. Does anyone know the best way to deal with deer? Someone told me that uh, you could plant 
lavender in between the rows, but then someone else told me that doesn't work. So basically what you need is a fence. Does anyone have experience with dealing with keeping deer out of uh, gardens? Hit me up. There's a lot of land like this that hasn't been cleared yet and isn't being cultivated on our property. And it's always a, uh, a tough struggle when, you know, you don't have enough time and also you want to create a good habitat for different birds and insects and, you know, I, I've read papers that you want to have about, you know, 10 to 15 percent of your property that's not under cultivation, you know, for bees because bumblebees and honeybees are the biggest, two of the biggest pollinators, especially bumblebees if you have them. So. I think it's important to leave some ground uncultivated so that, uh, you know, you can build up your, your biome, your, your environment to be healthy. Seeing as how we're next to a uh, volcano, albeit a dormant one, we have a lot of uh, rock around here and uh, especially lava rock. So right underneath us, there could, there could be a cave for spelunking. Um, there's no confirmed one right here, but just, uh, you know, less than a half a mile this way, there's caves ranging in, you know, just a few hundred yards long. And uh, there's some of them over this way. Actually, there's a lot of them. They're littered throughout the, throughout the forest that are, you know, you can walk for over a mile. And uh, it's pretty fun to go spelunking in them. And, uh, something you have to crawl some you can stand up in. They used to store cheese here and uh, milk products in the caves before they had refrigeration. So yeah, mostly people just go there for fun now. Nobody's allowed to store things there anymore. Do you know what you're looking at right here? This is the scourge of farmers. Um, it's probably what we call a gopher puff from the western pocket gopher and they they run rampant throughout the fields and do the most uh, economic damage. Um, they're right up there with the elk and the deer and doing damage. And, you know, they breed so fast, like rabbits. So many times a year, they just tunnel underneath. And uh, as far as I know, there's not too many predators except for humans, but you just can't, you can't trap them as fast as they reproduce. And in some places they're endangered, but around here they're not. So it's pretty crazy. I don't know if you guys have gophers in your lawn or on your farms or or whatever, but they're kind of the bane of our existence. But, you know, being organic, you only have so many choices to deal with them. So that's life. All this land right here is rock. None of it can be cultivated. You know, there's a few trees growing on here. But like I said earlier, there's just so much rock here being close to a mountain. Back in 1980 when Mount St. Helens exploded and changed the Earth's atmosphere for weeks, my dad was milking when it exploded and he got to see it and it put ash all over the uh, some of the towns and cities around where we live but none directly on our side but yeah it was one of the biggest explosions in uh, relatively modern times so you know, it was like Hiroshima bombs after bomb after bomb going off in magnitude. It was pretty fascinating. Part of me wishes I could see this mountain blow up, but I don't think it's going to happen. And I would probably regret it, but it would be neat to see in a way as long as no one got hurt. <laughs> so I'm certainly no expert, but I'm going to try to explain something that organic farmers do and probably non-organic ones too. But what you do is sometimes in the spring before you plant um, the fields, you might uh, let the weeds start to grow, which are usually pretty fast growers. And then at some point you'll disc, you'll disc them under, you'll push them under the ground with a blade sort of implement and uh, or cultivate the ground and then uh, water it again and some more weeds will come out of dormancy you know, they'll come, they'll be activated based on uh, heat and uh, some other different factors, water. 
but then you can wait a few more weeks and then um, if you have enough time to plant what well, you're going to plant later you can dish the weeds under again and then hopefully you will, you will have activated enough of the weeds and killed enough of them so that when you plant whatever crop you're going to plant you're probably going to plant corn for silage here or maybe oats then hopefully um, your your crop that you want will have a better chance of uh, competing at that point.